Has prayer led you to your watershed moments? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Because of a devastating childhood illness at 19 months, Helen Keller was left both blind and deaf. Her life was rightly written up as a miracle story and became a play called The Miracle Worker with Anne Bancroft starring in the Broadway production. But the miracle Helen Keller experienced was not any return of hearing or vision. The miracle she received was the miracle of her committed loving family and of her relentlessly optimistic and patient teacher, Anne Sullivan. When Helen was seven years old, trapped in a world where she could only communicate through few hand signals with a family cook, her parents arranged for a 20-year-old, visually impaired teacher to come and work with their daughter. Using American Sign Language, Anne Sullivan spent months spelling words into Helen's hands. Everything Helen touched, everything she ate, every person she encountered was spelled out into her hand. At first, Helen Keller didn't get it. These random motions being pressed into her palm did not connect with experiences she felt. But Sullivan refused to give up. She kept spelling words. She kept giving tactile verbal references for everything Helen encountered. Finally, there was a watershed moment, which was indeed water-powered. Helen's breakthrough moment was as she was having water pumped over her hands and Anne Sullivan kept spelling the word for water over and over into her palm. Suddenly, Helen got it. Suddenly, she realized those gestures meant something real and tangible. They were naming what she was experiencing. The world of communication, reading, literature, human interaction were all made possible to one person through the gift of another. The miracle Helen's teacher, Anne Sullivan, worked was the miracle of patience. She simply kept on and kept at it, showing Helen there were words for things and there was true meaning behind all Helen's experiences. Today's event of the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ is liturgically the end of Christmas. It is also the third epiphany or manifestation of God's presence to us, His people. The first was on December 25 when God manifested Himself to us through a vulnerable infant surrounded by shepherds. The second epiphany was through the Magi's, foreigners and pagans. The baptism of Jesus is present in all the synoptic Gospels, Luke where today's Gospel reading is taken, Matthew and Mark, and also in the book of John. Synoptic because they all include many of the same stories or accounts, often in the same sequence and words of the life of Jesus. But it is only in St. Luke's account that says Jesus was at prayer after his baptism. We reflect today on our own baptism. Many of us may have been baptized at birth. We may never have felt its real significance. Attending a baptismal ceremony of a loved one or friend may simply be just that, a nice ceremony which to the uninitiated is just a ritual. But if we look back at very important moments in the Bible, we can appreciate our baptism better. Recall that out of the Genesis waters of chaos, God proceeded to bring order. Also, the flood that led to God's pact with Noah and man to never curse the earth again, the parting of the Red Sea to liberate the ancient Hebrews from slavery, the waters of the Jordan that led to the Promised Land, the water that flowed from the pierced side of Christ, all these were watershed moments, turning points in the history of man. With the earth being 71% water and the body 60%, and us birthed for nine months in the waters of our mother's womb, it is clear how significant water is to us. We use phrases such as, it is raining cats and dogs, or the heavens open to signify the water that abounds. Indeed, it was after the people and Jesus were baptized and while Jesus was praying that the heavens opened and the Spirit of God came down as a dove, not as cats and dogs, and God spoke a very personal way to him, affirming him of his identity and his mission. You are my beloved Son. With you, I am well pleased. Our own baptism in the Holy Spirit takes on a watershed moment when we are able to grow and mature in our relationship with our Lord. The turning point in our life happens when we are able to fully grasp our Christianity. From the mere observance of our religion, we start to immerse ourselves in the church, in Bible study, 
in prayer because of our love for God. It is when our prayer times become moments of discovery and realization of how much loved we are by our God that these prayerful moments become events of redirection and commitment to a life of holiness. When we open ourselves up to the Lord in constantly deep prayer, our baptismal identity becomes more alive. We become more attuned to God's will for us, to love totally and unconditionally those around us by forgiving always, to serve God in all forms without counting the cost, to give to the poor without looking for praise or gratitude or recognition. We only receive the Holy Spirit once during our ritual baptism, but the power of the Holy Spirit remains in us to be constantly released and rekindled. We are constantly baptized in the Spirit rather than was baptized in the Spirit when we allow ourselves to be touched by Him, to do good works, to live in faith, to be grateful every moment for our blessings, to love even if we are not loved. We may not always respond to our baptismal calling when we are tested in our trials and challenges, but when we are prayerfully present to the Holy Spirit's loving voice, the living waters of our baptism will always spill from the sacred shed of God and wash away our uncleanness to continue our journey fresh and renewed. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the many deep prayer experiences when I can truly be one with you. Rain down on me your Holy Spirit to cleanse, assure, empower, and give me hope. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.